Hi guys, today I'm going to cover the H lookup function. I already have a great video on VLOOKUP function which has gotten over a hundred thousand hits. People seem to love it and so I'm going to tackle the H lookup which is much less used but still comes up from time to time. Basically the main difference is, is in the H lookup function, the lookup table you are going to be referencing has its values in the opposite way than a VLOOKUP in the sense that the lookups are going along in a row and the values you're trying to get are also on a separate row as opposed to them being next to each other in this fashion. So if your lookup table was like this, look like this, then you use a VLOOKUP. But if your lookup table is look, looking like this, then you use the H lookup. So I'm sure you can make the see the comparison. See, this is the same lookup table, but just has it's kind of a transpose of, 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 of each other. Okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this, and I'm gonna actually bring in our data set that we're gonna use and pull in some of these values and so I also like to interject in all these videos some useful tricks to uh, make your work a lot easier and faster and so I want to bring in the data on the left side of this table just for aesthetic purposes and so obviously we all know we can we can click right click on the column A and say insert but I need a bunch of uh, columns so instead of repeatedly doing this, and it's kind of time consuming, sometimes you can even highlight two and insert and it'll insert two, there's even a more efficient way of doing this. What you basically do is you do it once and then you use control Y, which is just repeat in Excel. Okay? And you could do this really fast. Okay? So I've made enough columns for me to go into my other sheet and grab my data set that I'll be working with to demonstrate the H lookup. Okay, so I'm going to paste that right there and then I'm going to go ahead and add a couple columns that we might be interested in. So let's add a salary column, let's add a commission rate column, and a commission amount column. Let's resize these and also do some quick formatting to make this look a little cleaner. Okay, so now we're ready to go. Let's make these comma separated, two decimal places, and we'll do the same here to make this a percentage. Okay, so each one of these rows represents an employee, and here's his title. Here's his division, here's his sales, and we want the salary of this individual. Now, instead of going to his title, then going to a lookup table and taking his salary and typing it in manually, because we may have hundreds of employees, if not thousands, there's functions in Excel which make this a lot easier. So. In this case, for salary, we're going to use the H lookup function. So you type equals H lookup, and what H lookup means, it's horizontal lookup. Okay? So the salary is based on the title of the employee. So first argument is that individual's title. Okay? So we're dealing with this row by row. Okay? So cell B4 is that individual's title. Comma. The second item in the HLOOKUP function is the lookup table. The table that's going to find the title for this employee and then return his salary. And that table is the salary lookup table that I've created here on the side. And what you need to do is you need to highlight the entire table with the headers and the amounts. Once you've highlighted the entire table, you hit F4 and basically puts dollar signs around the table and locks that table. 
so it cannot move as you drag the formula around which, which we will do later okay the third part of the argument is once basically Excel is asking once I have found the title of this employee in this table that you've told me to look for it what do you want me to return to you and in this case there's only one thing that Excel can return to us and that is the salary but the way you convey to Excel that that's what you want is in the HLOOKUP function you give the row number of the value that you want Excel to return so in this case if our table is these is represented by these two rows then the salaries are in the second row so you just type the number two and then comma you can the last part of both the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP function is the range lookup which is basically telling Excel do you want me to find an exact match or an approximate match and in this case because we're looking up a title and a word we want an exact match okay almost 99 percent of the time if you're looking up if what you're looking up in this case title is a word or text you want an exact match okay so you'll type false and that's to Excel means exact okay now we'll hit enter and we should get 50,000 because he is an analyst and voila we do now because we typed in the function with the appropriate uh, absolute values around the table meaning that when we drag this formula down the table will not move and we did not lock the lookup value which was the title of each row when we drag this formula down the lookup value will change as we want it to but the table the lookup table will not change due to the dollar signs okay so let's go and see that our formula works properly it's always good to check okay so another analyst and he should make 50,000 associate 75 correct VP 150, VP 150, Analyst 50, Associate 75. And as you can see from here, that is what we're looking for. Okay, so let's see what happens when you drag the formula down. When you drag the formula down, look, the title, which we want, which was our lookup value, B4, turn to B5 because we did not put dollar signs around it we didn't hit F4 after we clicked on B4 okay but the table as you can see highlighted here does not change no matter where I go the table stays the same and that is we obviously don't want that table to change that's the lookup table for all these rows so I think you understand uh, the functionality of, uh, of the, the and the purpose behind putting the dollar signs or what in Excel lingo is called absoluting uh, cell reference okay versus a relative cell reference like our lookup value okay now the commission rate the commission rate is based on the sales of that individual so dealing with it again row by row we do the formula one time properly for the first row for the first employee and then when we do that correctly we can simply drag it down and check that it worked and we can move on we don't have to retype the formula okay so equals H lookup this time our lookup value is the individual sales and we do not absolute that reference in other words we don't put dollar signs around it comma the second part again is the lookup table in this case the commission lookup table is where we need to go and when you're looking up a number as opposed to a title a text a name the lookup table is going to look slightly different in this case instead of the title being across the first row like in the salary lookup table the commission amount buckets are on are the the lookup values and the way you put these in is that you put the top uh, 
the, the sorry the lower uh, uh, value of each bucket uh, associated with each commission rate so for example anybody who had sales between 0 and 4999 will get 3% and that's a zero over there excel just shows a dash anyone who had sales of 45000 up to 70, 69,999 will have a commission rate of 5%. And then anyone who had 70,000 and above will get 8%. Okay, so again, the, the values here represent the lower limit on each bucket. Okay, so we will, just like before, highlight the entire table, hit F4 to absolute that table, to lock that table, comma. We want Excel, when it finds the appropriate bucket where our sales falls into, to return the second row information. So we just type column, uh, the number two. And then this time, instead of typing false, which is an exact match, we obviously aren't looking for exact matches here because sales can be any and every number in between each one of these buckets as opposed to when we're looking up names or text we want exact matches here we type true which conveys to Excel that we want an approximate match okay so let's see this guy right here the first employee we're doing falls right on the edge of the two uh, lower salary uh, I mean commission uh, buckets so like I told you, anything from 45 and up will get 5%. So he should get 5%, and he does. Let's drag this down and see that it works correctly. This guy makes less than 45. So from 0 to 45,000 to 44,999, we'll get 3%. We expect this guy to get 8. This guy to get 8, obviously. This guy to get 8. This guy to get five and this guy to get still five because it's less than 70 but greater than 45 okay so next the last step which is just a simple calculation the commission amount and in this case just for simplicity we're just going to calculate the commission amount by doing the sales times the commission rate which at this point should be trivial for most of us right so equals the sales amount times the commission rate and that's our commission amount right we could drag that down the way the reason why I did it this way is to break out to show you that this formula worked correctly but there's another way to do this all in one step so I'll do that here as a little bonus if you're interested in doing it all in one step so again we're gonna look up the commission rate and compute the commission amount in one step so H lookup, the sales, comma, commission lookup table, F4, comma, return column, co uh, row two, comma, true, because we're looking up numbers. And this time, we would be done to get the commission rate, except we can do one extra step and multiply this commission rate by, back to the original sales amount. And this should get us the same number, which was 2250. Voila. And we can drag that down and we get the commission amounts okay so I hope this was a uh, informative video on H lookups uh, be sure to check out my VLOOKUP video where I go through a very similar example except with a vertical lookup same logic different dimensionality uh, also check out my other videos I got a bunch of other tutorials in Excel uh, make sure you comment subscribe fave like and uh, let me know if there's any other topics you want me to cover. Until next time, have a great day.